Welcome to part two. I want to talk a bit about blogs and blogging. Freedom of speech has taken on a whole new meaning with the use of blogs. Blogs have become extremely popular because they're free and they're easy to use. And if you're one of the millions who've wanted to spread the word through a blog, well, you've come to the right place to get started. It's actually quite simple in some cases and can be difficult with some other blogging programs. Setting up a blog through Blogger is really simple. Blogger is a blogging program created by Google and it's free to use and simple to get started. All you need to do is sign up and then sign in and you get a free account and you can start to use the program right away. And Blogger is hosted through Google and it allows you to use a subdomain, for example, yourname.blogspot.com. And after you sign up, you go through the process of choosing the design template. And next thing you do is you go ahead with adding content through their user-friendly control panel and voila, you have a blog. With WordPress, actually there are two versions of WordPress. Um, the first one here at wordpress.com actually isn't too much different than a regular blogging site. And the other one you'll find here at wordpress.org which you download and host on your site. And it's quite a complicated process. What you have to do is download it um, and then you open the file. You have to configure the MySQL databases on your server, upload it via an FTP server, and then set it all up on your site. Um, if you have a hosting package that includes Fantastico, you can install it at a click of a button. But if you don't, then you have to install it manually and it can be a bit difficult if you're not particularly uh, technically minded. And then finally there's Movable Type here at movabletype.org. And again, it's similar to the downloadable version of WordPress. It's free to sign up, but you have to uh, download it as a zip file, unzip it, and then FTP the files to your server and change all the permissions and, and so on. It does come with instructions uh, as to how to do it. But again, like the um, downloadable version of WordPress, it can be a bit difficult if you're not technically minded. As I was saying earlier, many of the different hosting companies available offer a quick and easy installation process for adding a blog to your site. GoDaddy.com, for example, is a great hosting site that does this in less than five minutes with no configurations at your end. And this makes it amazingly easy to set up a blog for those who aren't particularly technical. And what you can simply do is search the web to see which blogging program you would like to use best and then get started. Another great idea is to use a different template than the default um, and there are lots available which you can get for free or there's something you have to pay for. And if you go to Google and search free WordPress themes, for example, if you're installing WordPress, you're going to find a whole lot of different sites that offer free templates, free themes uh, that you can start to use and make your blog look a bit different from all the rest. Managing a blog is more than just posting a few items and then that's it. For those who want to use a blog as an information portal, managing a blog is a process that takes time, patience and actual work. And there are things that you'll need to do to get your blog on the map and maintain a constant and frequent visitor flow. Now, here are some vital tips to help you learn how to manage your blog and get closer to becoming an icon in the blogging world. And the first thing to do is to create a schedule. In order to effectively manage your blog, you'll need to create a realistic schedule for the time you will apply to the process. It's extremely important that it's a truly realistic schedule so that you don't over or underestimate and lose faith in managing your blog. Try to start small and then gradually increase the amount of time that you'll put into managing your blog. And then you want to figure out your priorities, and this is best determined after you figure out what you're going to use your blog for. If it's a company blog or a blog used to sell or promote things, then you'll need to create a priority list to manage your blog effectively. 
When you manage a blog, you'll want to learn about posting frequently as the posts are the heart and soul of the whole blog. So try to post daily or every other day to ensure that your readers are getting the most up-to-date information possible. Readers visit certain blogs frequently because they're full of new and updated information, so try creating a list of topics to update frequently and then write about one each day. Some bloggers keep a notebook with them all the time because inspiration can hit at the strangest moments. Unfortunately, the blogging world has the same problems with spammers as any other part of the internet. Many blogging systems are integrating widgets such as Askimet to block spammers and save you time it takes going through all that nasty spam. The long told phrase, practice makes perfect, is just as true for managing a blog. It takes a lot of time to learn an effective routine and it's important to truly try before giving up, although you should never really give up. Practice also helps you to create posts much quicker and makes the time it takes to manage a blog significantly shorter. And you'll want to utilize the extra tools that come with your blog. You know, blogging programs offer those extra tools for a reason, to make managing your blog much easier. You'll find a wealth of useful tools in your control panel such as RSS feed tools, spammer protection, analytics and a whole lot more. Look into these and see what you think might help you manage your blog more effectively. If you find that managing your blog has become too much for you, you do have the option of outsourcing. And there are many sites that help connect you with bloggers and blog managers looking for work. And this is going to cost you more, but it'll be worth it in the long run if your blog is making you money. Managing a blog is not as easy as it looks, but if you utilize these tips, you'll soon see that it can be less chaotic and more effective. Continuously check your blog's program, forums and blogs to see who's using what technologies and what technologies are making it easier for you to manage your blog. Bloggers all over the world have their opinions about the blogging programs they use. Two highly used blogging programs are Blogger and WordPress, both of which had their own features and downfalls. But there's been a wide range of debate to see who would win a fight between Blogger and WordPress. There are many things to consider when comparing these two blogging programs, such as setup, templates, usability, and features. Well, let's get started. And in the blue corner, sponsored by Google, it's Blogger. And in the green corner, the up-and-coming challenger, WordPress. Round one is setup. In the Blogger versus WordPress debate, the setup between the two programs is drastically different. Blogger's setup is quite simple and only requires you to sign up for a free account and pick a blog theme and name. WordPress's setup can be much more difficult than Blogger's. WordPress requires you to sign up download, configure files, FTP transfer to your server, and then install. For those who are unfamiliar with server technology, they're going to find it extremely hard to set up WordPress. Thus, <coughs> Blogger wins this round. <coughs> and round two is templates. Every blogging program has basic templates to choose from when you're creating a blog. WordPress comes equipped with two themes when installing it onto your server. However, there is an abundant amount of free and fee-based themes available on the web. But, Blogger has 12 templates to choose from in the base process of getting started. Again, there are those who offer free and fee-based templates for Blogger as well. But, for the sake of simplicity, <coughs> Blogger wins this round due to having more templates on the base site. <coughs> round 3 is Usability. <coughs> In the Blogger versus WordPress debate, 
the usability between the two is quite different. Many say that Blogger is better than WordPress when it comes to usability, and others say vice versa. So let's look at the basics. Blogger has three sections postings, settings, and layouts. It's simple and effective, but a little difficult to understand and organize. WordPress has a uniquely integrated control panel that has a separate place for posting blog posts and web pages. There's also a place to edit, both for newbies and advanced webmasters. Not to mention its organization is simple and effective. Thus, WordPress wins this round. And round four is features. Both Blogger and WordPress have many options and extra features to choose from. Both of these programs offer widget and commenting capabilities. Blogger has the option to have multi-language blogs, multiple blogs on one account, and group blogging. However, WordPress has many features that are less limited than Blogger's, a favorite being the ability to archive and organize the way you want. It also has better text formatting options and accurate coding for a crisp, professional-looking blog. Let's face it, professional is always the best option, so... <coughs> WordPress wins this round. <coughs> the debate of Blogger versus WordPress has come to a tie, thus proving the long-known truth that choice is based on experience and personal preference. The information in this video will bring you one step closer to choosing which blogging program is best for you in your situation. If you want an easy and effective way to just write what you want, Blogger is for you. If you prefer a professional looking website with a blog, WordPress is the way to go.